Hey everyone, this is the start of a new series I'll be doing. Every so often, I'd like to respond to a news or opinion piece about gaming with an in-depth video response. I'm hoping to achieve two goals here. One, start productive conversations on game design with other thinkers. And two, bring some more attention to what I consider to be good writing on games. Today I'll be talking about Eric Kane's 10 big changes Destiny needs to make. Usually I'd just comment on Forbes, but I have so much to talk about I didn't think that that was the right spot. For Mr. Kane's and others' benefits, I've placed the narrative online in case folks would prefer to read it than watch this video. You can find a link in the description. Let's start with the suggestion to diversify the grind. One of the things Mr. Kane mentions is that Destiny's universe is both repetitive and small compared to other MMOs. Generally speaking, I agree. Destiny is a surprisingly small game given that it's an MMO. The DLC doesn't add much to it. The first expansion contains only four new story missions, easily completable in a couple sittings. But Destiny further exacerbates its lack of content through its disjointed progression and joyless grinding. Mr. Kane discusses the first issue. Higher levels in Destiny are unlocked by finding and upgrading equipment. Progress is very discreet. Finding a new, better piece of armor can result in an instant level upgrade. Grinding that results in no useful equipment drops results in no discernible progress. This means that grinding in Destiny is hit or miss. It's easy to spend hours doing it and accomplish nothing. This reduces the player's sense of reward, which is further diminished by the way loot drops are handled. Destiny distributes loot through decryptable engrams rather than giving players loot directly. In principle, the two are the same. The RNG is merely spread out across multiple events. In practice, it disrupts the flow of grinding by forcing players to return to the tower every so often. Worse, it makes marginally useful loot drops feel like a loss instead of a win. All pieces of equipment have some value because they can be dismantled into upgrade parts, but by linking all loot drops to the potential of getting a great piece of equipment in players' minds, Destiny actually downplays that benefit in favor of the sense of not having gotten the equipment you were looking for. In short, players are encouraged to focus on what they didn't get instead of what they did get. This is a poorly designed reward mechanism, made worse by the joyless grinding that leads up to it. Grinding is not an inherently bad thing. In many MMOs, it's implemented as a mindless activity that delivers some incremental rewards. This is buttressed by the gilding features offered by most MMOs, offering a social benefit as well. Putting these two together, grinding can often be a fun way to relax after a stressful day. It's not necessarily fun for everyone, but there's definitely a group of players who enjoy doing this, myself included. Destiny lacks any sort of gilding features, a somewhat baffling inclusion given its emphasis on teamwork-based raids in its first expansion. In my opinion, the social benefits of playing MMOs are often understated. Grinding in many other titles, even those with much more content, often still involves a great deal of repetition. The variety comes from interactions with people. So, while I agree that the content is limited and repetitive, I don't think adding more diversity is necessarily the best approach to the problem. At least, I think it needs to be combined with design changes to make the existing content more compelling. Mr. Kane suggests that much of his problem with the lack of diversity comes from recycling levels. He suggests procedurally generated levels as one solution. To an extent, I agree with him. However, Destiny was in development for at least half a decade and the base game is sorely lacking in content. The new expansion didn't add much. My point is that I don't think Bungie is particularly good at coming up with new content for Destiny, perhaps because the technical design of the game makes doing so challenging. Compelling procedurally generated content is not easy to make, and I don't think Bungie could pull it off successfully. I think it would be better to make the decision to include procedurally generated content early in the development of the sequel and build the game around that assumption. Mr. Kane does mention that many of his suggestions are only applicable to Destiny 2, so I'm not necessarily contradicting him here. One change that I think can reasonably be patched into Destiny is a streamlining of the endgame loot and leveling systems. Mr. Kane rightly points out that it's a bit jumbled and confusing for those not completely invested. In my original review, I praised Destiny for tying a player's level to their equipment. This is how it works in practice in most MMOs anyway. Formalizing it seems like a good simplification, particularly for a console game. So, while I think that the way Bungie has gone about implementing this is puzzling, 
I do think that the core design principles are already present. A lack of a cash shop, limitations on how much players can grind per week, equipment that levels automatically as long as it's equipped, levels tied to equipment. All of these big picture design decisions make sense to me. It's the details that are muddled. I'd like to see Bungie take another stab at rebalancing the loot and level systems. Soliciting feedback from the community would provide them with a wealth of good ideas. I'd even be in favor of changes that hurt existing players in the short term, so long as it simplifies and improves the systems in the long run, so long as existing players get compensated through some other means. One form of compensation is character customization options. Games like Team Fortress 2 have proven that players genuinely value cosmetic items. I agree wholeheartedly with Mr. Kane's suggestion to include more customization. He focuses on the character model, but I would extend this to include all sorts of optional content, including vehicle skins, emblems, clothing enhancements, etc. These could also be given out as rewards after strikes and be purchasable with in-game currency, providing some degree of progress for every mission a player completes. I'll admit that I'm baffled by how much players value cosmetic items in games, but if it's something that people get some harmless fun out of, I think its inclusion is a net win for everyone. Mr. Kane is critical of Destiny's story and universe, describing them as tacked on. I partially disagree with regard to the lore. Destiny's lore is rich and interesting. The problem is that it's limited to a companion app. It doesn't help that the companion app is plagued by usability and performance issues, at least on my phone. In any case, more of the lore needs to be included in the game itself. Requiring players to pull out their phone to understand why they should care about the game world is needlessly disruptive. I don't have a problem including the lore in a medium outside of the game, but first and foremost, it should be discoverable and digestible inside of the game itself. With regards to the story, Mr. King suggests adding more of it and perhaps including some more player choices. I disagree. I think the story doesn't work largely because of the writing and the game's design. I think that if more of the existing story were fleshed out, it would still fail to be compelling. From a writing perspective, Destiny's story doesn't give the player a reason to care. For one, there's no conflict in Destiny. The player has no opportunity to build a working mental model of where they fit into the galaxy because there doesn't seem to be a place to fit into. This is why I think choice wouldn't help things. Conflict is a useful plot device because it forces players to pick a side, even if subconsciously. If Destiny included political strife, such as a faction that believed the original arrival of the Traveler was a bad thing for humanity, players could get more invested in the story because they would feel like they were a part of it, like they were on one side or the other. As it is today, every villain feels equally generic because the player has no ownership in the world. They have nothing to actually fight for. This is worsened by the decision to end every strike with a monologue indicating the endless and hopeless nature of the player's fight. No mission feels like a success because it ends by telling the player they'll be doing it again, likely forever. This causes players to check out of the story completely. With regards to the game's design, the post-apocalyptic setting clashes with the inclusion of PvP and public instances. It's hard to get invested into saving the world when you just spent an hour summarily massacring dozens of other guardians. It's hard to believe the world is at risk when players are goofing around all around you when you're trying to complete a mission. These elements are fundamental aspects of the game's design. Many MMOs solve this problem by creating stories that are inherently endless but still compelling often involving a protracted struggle between two sides that players can choose from. The classic example, of course, is Alliance vs. Horde. Quests can follow this theme. It's odd that a merchant would constantly need more materials from an infinite number of players, but it's not unreasonable that he's willing to give everyone a fetch quest. It is unreasonable for every player to independently kill the same world-ending boss with no impact on the world. Mr. Kane touches on the lack of class variety in Destiny. He also mentions he'd like to see some more consequences from choosing your race, but I have no thoughts on that. On the topic of classes, personally, I don't like the way the class system is designed. Classes are far too similar to each other, likely to accommodate the Crucible, particularly the free-for-all modes. I much prefer the team-based approach of other MMOs, where players pick a class with obvious strengths and weaknesses. Tanks absorb damage and defend allies, 
DPSers do a lot of damage, healers provide support and buffs, etc. I get that this system leads to imbalances because most people want to be either a DPSer or a rogue, but I disagree with the decision to simplify this and simply make everyone a DPSer in one way or another. This is probably because I genuinely enjoy playing as a tank. It's really fun, at least for me, and always easy to find a party. Destiny's lack of gilding and other social mechanics make this idea a non-starter, so I think it's more a suggestion for a different design direction in Destiny 2. Furthermore, it doesn't necessarily preclude the Crucible. There's no reason PvP needs to have the same rules as PvE. This is already true today. Class differences could be throttled or cut out completely in the Crucible, producing a tight, balanced, Halo-like experience that would arguably be more fair than the experience today. This direction conflicts a bit with Mr. Kane's suggestion to include more solo options. I actually really like this suggestion, but I think it's mutually exclusive with my point above. Basically, I want to see Bungie adopt a more focused attitude with Destiny 2, either building a full-fledged MMO or a connected but still fundamentally single-player solo experience. The only reason I bought Destiny was for the solo content. I like that Destiny includes some automated matchmaking options so that solo players can experience more of the content. Bungie should either continue further in this direction or abandon it completely. I don't think the middle ground can really work. The two game modes have very different incentives. However, for both Destiny and any of its planned sequels, I strongly agree with the notion of regular, cheap new content. There just isn't enough content in Destiny. I do think that it poorly utilizes the content that it does have, and this should be fixed too, but even so, there just isn't that much there. Regular, cheap content updates would go a long way in keeping players interested. I don't have much to say on Mr. Kane's last two suggestions, to go beyond shooting and include a third person helmet free mode. These sound like neat ideas, but I don't have much interest in them, which is just a matter of personal preference. I'll take this time to talk about a few ideas I would add to Mr. Kane's list. First, the loading times in Destiny are unreasonable. In my original review of the game, I calculated that about a quarter of a player's time in multiplayer is spent looking at a loading screen. This is unacceptable. Honestly, it's the biggest reason for me personally that I think this should be a PC title. Reducing loading times would go a long way to improve the experience, as would redesigning navigation. The decision to force players back into orbit before they can pick a new launch destination forces players into an extra, unnecessary loading screen. Adding some navigation options into the tower directly would both make it a more compelling location and reduce waiting times. Second, automatic matchmaking should be paired with a reputation system. Players leaving in the middle of strikes and multiplayer matches is a grating and frustrating issue. A combination of automated reputation tracking like percentage of games left, damage dealt, etc., with manual reporting, similar to Demon's Souls, would go a long way in weeding out toxic players and ensuring reliable people get matched up with each other. The devil is in the details, and a poorly thought out reputation system could easily make things worse. I do think that it can be patched into Destiny, but it's not something that the developers should take lightly. Third, fragmentation with new content should be handled better. The decision to split out multiplayer modes between the expansion and the base game was the wrong decision. In a game like Battlefield, it makes sense. Players explicitly select a server to join, so they need to know what content that server supports before they can join it. In an automated matchmaking system, this is no longer the case. There's no reason there should be two clash options. This just doesn't scale, creating a factorial number of options with each new expansion. If the developers want to enable players to only play a subset of the content, a matchmaking filter could easily be added. But adding a new multiplayer selection each time a new expansion comes out is a recipe for community fragmentation, leading to a vicious cycle of more and more players only playing the vanilla content because it's the only place they can reliably find a match. Finally, I'll touch on a few things I think Destiny should keep doing. This is just as important as what it shouldn't do. The UI is well designed. The lack of a cash shop shows respect for the player base. The public-private instancing transfers are remarkably well done. The core mechanics are extremely well done. The goal of simplifying the endgame is a noble one and deserves to be executed properly. The content of the lore is excellent, even if its presentation is currently flawed. Okay, that's my take on Mr. Kane's article. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.